our jobs as cloud engineers are going to change. They're gonna change very rapidly. So you're gonna to need to master these four skills if you don't wanna be left behind. The first skill is architecting. You're going to want to master the skill of creating systems. So you're gonna to wanna to learn how to design systems of services that work together to perform a function. When you are learning to master the skill, you're gonna to need to connect systems together. So when you do your own personal cloud project, try to use as many services as you can, try to master as many services as you can, try to understand how services interact with each other. So for example, if you use an Azure function, try to put an API management in front of it and don't use just the Azure function. So this way you have at least two systems working there. If you create a website or put a content delivery network in front of it and maybe put a backend and maybe put a database and just start to build things and try to figure out how they work together and how they grow together because scaling is very important. How does your service scale? Another thing as part of architecting you're going to want to do is create schematics. You're going to want to create a schematic, a drawing, a visualization of some sort of your design. Don't just say, I have these things. You're going to need to be able to draw those and show them to somebody. So how do you create a schematic that is representative of what you're doing, that is representative of the user experience, the data flow, or what have you? Now, one thing I recommend if you don't know where to start or you don't have the money to buy a software like Visio, you can start with draw.io. They have an extension in Visual Studio Code. You can see that you can grab uh, different icons for different services. You can connect them to each other and you can just make a drawing. It doesn't have to be something extremely complicated but get used to making drawings and get used to making diagrams of the services you build in the cloud and how they interact with each other. Of course, if they don't interact with each other, don't put them on the same diagram because it just makes things more complicated for no reason. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to master is the command line. And the reason for that is because we are going more and more to code-based deployment in the cloud, and that's gonna be a third scale, but we wanna be familiar with the command line because there are a few things about the command line that you can do that you cannot do in the portals. If you limit yourself to the portal, you're limiting yourself to what you can do. That's going to be very difficult because there's going to be impossible tasks for you if you don't start learning the command line. My advice for learning the command line is when you do a deployment, try to do the deployment in the command line. Uh, you don't have to do complicated things. If you can keep it to the bare minimum, that's fine. But try to get things done in the command line as much as possible so that you get your hands on the command line, you get a feel for how it works, the logic of how the command line is built, you get to familiarize yourself with certain commands, and it really it will really help with that basic knowledge. And that brings us to point number three. You're gonna to wanna to master infrastructure as code. Now there are a lot of vendors out there and I think they're still battling who's the, the big one. Uh, Terraform is a big one. Cloud providers also have their own ways of doing infrastructure as code. So get familiar with the whole concept at first, then you can dig into one of the vendors. Try to familiarize yourself with those because they're gonna grow. They're going to be more and more important because infrastructure as code gives you a lot of flexibility, transparency, control. So for example, you need to do Git and all that stuff and you would have to commit a pull request and people will have to look at your code to make sure that it's good to deploy in production. So there are a lot of advantages of infrastructure as a service, and that's something I can see growing more and more in the next few years. So if you don't wanna be left behind for these companies that do big cloud deployments, 
you're going to want to familiarize yourself with infrastructure as code. And somewhat in the same vein as infrastructure as code and command line programming, try to learn some software development kits for the cloud providers you use. There's infrastructure as code tools, but then there's infrastructure as code in-house. So you're going to want to learn how to do those things in-house through the REST APIs. Now, I don't see that being as important and something becoming as dominant as uh, tools like Terraform, but it's always a good thing to have in your tool belt. And lastly, the fourth scale is data analytics. Now, that's a weird one to mention, but hear me out. So a lot of the jobs in cloud have to do with optimization. They have to do with either getting the most performance, the most bang for your bucks. They have to do with optimization. And if you don't learn how to analyze data, if you don't learn how to read data, how to simulate data, because that's how you make the decision, you have the data, you simulate your actions, and then you implement the results. So mastering data analytics is crucial to doing jobs in the cloud because once you do your deployment, you have to analyze that data. Can you read CPU usage, memory usage, requests, how many errors you get, how many successful things you get, why, what gets the most errors or most successes, and what gets the least, a cost, how do you break down things by meter? How do you identify the source of a cost? So for example, you have huge write operations on your storage account and you're wondering where it came from. And can you relate that to, for example, a Azure function being triggered a lot, an Azure function that writes to that storage account being triggered a lot and writing data to that storage account. So that type of analytics, look at your own data or look at your employer's data, which is even better. Theoretically, you should have a lot of data in your employer's data. I know I have a ton and that's where I get most of my experience. But if you don't have that privilege, look at your own data, look at how actions impact cost, how actions impact performance, um, and try to do some minor analysis. That's super important. All right, so these are my four skills. Do you have any other skills that I missed? Leave them in the comments down below because it really helps this puppy. Look at her. Look at, look at this paw. Look at her. Poor little puppy. Leave a comment down below. It makes her very happy.